Greetings, I'm Alaika. And how is everyone today? Thank you. It's nice to meet you, Alaika. I haven't yet spoken with you, but everyone's oh, I good. I speak to many. <laughs> but it's nice to meet you. And it's nice to speak you, to you and feel your energy. Thank I you. love that. Thank you. And I know that there are questions out there for me to start. So I will let them ask them first. Who in the room has a question? I don't have anybody's ones, but there was a person that requested a Leica, so that should probably... Yes, that should. That really I believe share. I have a question. Sheer, why don't you ask the question? Then. Go ahead, Sheer. Hello, Leica. How are you? I am very well. And yourself? <laughs> I'm uh, also well. Started to study. Of course, I know that. <laughs> You're studying agriculture in some form. Yeah, uh, water technologies. Yes. Excellent. Um, I was wondering if you ever had um, a reincarnation on Earth? I have not yet had a reincarnation on Earth. I do speak to those that have had reincarnations on Earth that are creative beings. And they are doing very well there. This is not my area of space to reincarnate into at this moment. So that is why I have not come to Earth in that particular way. Now, I am here for all of the universe to be a guide and a help. But to reincarnate into it, n not at this time. That is not my uh, mission. I see. Um, but I see that there are those of you, such as yourself, that have done so, and we are, we will reunite one day as friends in the creator realm. Yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to it. Also, I see that a lot of people don't know who you are and your background, so maybe you want to introduce yourself, just so people I, would know what to ask you. I am a creator, introduce myself any other way, but I am a help to those on the earth. I speak to many humans about their missions and give them encouragement and move them forward with energies. I also help them in the astral with some of their missions that they do, because I can do that. According to many, I have helped them do this and that. Of course, I know what I've done, but um, they seem to think I do even more than what I e e actually do. But um, I do help in the in the astral uh, fields and do help them with vortexes, with um, alignments, with uh, hybridizations and things of this nature, with uh, different things on the planet that need. Uh, work with the grids and the and the and the uh, power sources. Yes, I am here for that. Did you but say I that will not incarnate at this time? My time on Earth will not be for quite a while yet. Did you just say that you also help with hybridization? Can you tell something about that? How do you help those with? Well, I do help because. Um, I help it become successful. I do not do the hybridization myself, but I do help it and give it energy so that it may uh, move forward successfully. So I give some energy to it, yes, because hybridization is important. You see, your people are a hybrid species. You have always, beginning, you have been seeded in many different ways. Look at all your different cultures and looks and ways about you. And there came a time when your people had to look somewhat similar. So that was uh, done. And But you are a hybrid species that will help the galaxy once you become friendly with it. Yeah, it and the cool. reason the hybridization is important is because so many have helped you seed this society. So many species have been a part of it that it will help those species that have uh, seeded you to become more healthy planet most of the time. It strengthens 
the the species and that is what it's doing now in your species so that you may become strong and help with your dna at some point now there would be those species that would want to harvest humans or dna or whatever but that is not permitted and will not happen but you must volunteer your dna at some point to help the galaxy and universe thank you very much and thank you for coming you're you're welcome it is good to be here there is a good energy here and there's many that want to speak so if there are no questions there are others that will and perhaps there will be questions oh yeah of course just uh, told you thank you not uh... oh not goodbye <laughs> yeah, yeah i see what you're saying is there any other questions though uh typhus had a I question do... for you if that's okay who does typhus 84 from canada very well hello typhus hello how are you i am very well it's uh wonderful to feel your energy i was out Oh, thank you very much. Um, I do have a question. I uh, over yes. the last week and a half, uh, I've felt the presence of one gray twice and a man in a fedora hat, which I believe was like an MIB person. Uh, during yes. that time, it wasn't like a very positive experience for me. I was wondering if you could elaborate on that a little bit. It was not a positive uh, experience because uh, gray energies especially when you have a neutral or a negative gray in your presence, uh, their energy is far different than human energy. And so it does not mix with your energy very well. So you would not uh, feel them in a very positive way. Now, this particular gray, Cora Peen is his name, and he really um, wants to make association with you because you do have some gray in your um, your makeup, in your DNA. So he is uh -huh. looking to see if you have any gray traits, of any gray thought processes, and he wanted to see any of your actions. Now, since you've grown your hair out, he sees that as a gray trait. Why? Because they are bald, and you are trying to systematically uh, as a human, um, they, don't, they don't like being bald, by the way. And so you are just re repulsed by the baldness and you grew it out. So <laughs> the thing that he noticed about you that he figured was possibly a gray trait. And he's probably correct. I do not know. But you also have um, that you do like this the thoughts that grays have at certain points even though their energy these are very hybrid with the human race and so you do have some interest seeing a thought karma of the world is made up of all the people uh, all the different karmas that are the air that are being experienced at the moment so the gray karma is in the air uh, because there are some humans that are very gray acting it's attracted to uh, negativity and zeta gray activity but then again there, there are other grays that are not negative but their energy is still very different so you have to understand that you it may feel like a negative experience but they may not be there for a negative reason we can't hear you you have to unmute yourself yep yeah. uh thank you very much for your input I really uh, you are, you're yourself. Uh, the conversation was rather glitchy for me um so i heard maybe 60 mm, percent of it unfortunately well, yes you are frozen now and then so i th i see that that would be a problem I Can you comment on the man in the fedora hat? And the man in the fedora hat is a is a uh, relative from past lives. Ah, 
Wonderful. He is actually not a, a grandfather figure, but he is an uncle from three generations ago, or perhaps even four, four generations ago. And he is there because you are very much like him. He wore his hair very much like you did, or you are wearing it at this time. Your thought processes are very positive like his. He was a very successful man. He was wealthy in some ways. Um, he wasn't considered a millionaire or anything of that nature, but he, he did have a, a, a quite a bit of wealth. And he did have an office in the... in the local government. So he is actually, I believe, a spirit guide for you. Wonderful, thank you very much. Thank You're you. welcome. <laughs> okay, uh, Jim, we do have a question from the, uh, we have a question from the YouTube. Can I just ask that for you? Yes, go ahead and then we have one here in the room. Okay, per fine. Um, we have, um, the, the case from space is asking the question, how, vorte how are vortexes used? Do they help with interactions between species? They are vortexes. Let me tell you what they are. First of all, the first use is for energy. There are vortexes that release fourth dimensional energy into your planet so that your planet is slowly becoming a planet. And this has started since 2012, and it will continue until you reach the next uh, era or next part of your evolution. And it is one use for vortexes. Now, there are energy vortexes also for humans, idolize us and can help you with many things. Now, and there are vortexes that are help in space. Let me explain that. There are vortexes that are all the way up and down the uh, western coast of your United States, where they have many, many volcanoes and earthquakes and things of that nature. And these vortexes are holding that area in place. They are holding it in place because there can be a time when uh, these will be shaken and it is not necessarily meant for that area to fall into the ocean or be underwater. So they are protecting that area at least for this time. Thank you for that very much. Well, there's other uses as well, but I think that we are, I think that those are three very good examples. So vortexes that, uh, such as black holes and things of that nature, which are actually vortexes that do other things. Yeah. They condense matter and things of this nature. But the ones that are, that are there on your planet are the ones that are for positive use for the most part. I understand. Thank you very much. What other question is there here? Yeah. Barbara is coming to ask a question. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, get in front of the camera so they see you. I think they like that better. Here. What, wherever. Yes. My question is, I don't know how to explain it, but it's like a feeling that I'm getting from up above that is going to be guiding me into something or moving me into something, sure. I feel it, but I can't figure out what it is, do you? Yes, all right. Spiritual guidance always comes in different ways to, to everyone. Everyone is a unique individual and they feel spiritual guidances in different ways. This is just another form of spiritual guidance. You have been uh, truthful and awakened to the energies of the universe and God and and the spirit of you, that there is something there for you, and you're feeling the energy of that. 
Some people will feel it inside, feel it coming from a distance or from outside. Some people it comes as a chill or a vibration or some other way. But everyone is unique and God works with you each in a unique way. And so as you are moving forward in your mission and you are praying to God and asking for things to be revealed to you, and things to you and develop to you but you know that thing is happening and so that is an indication that you should be paying attention to um the future and the nearby uh, it's something nearby actually well, there's something else too that came up <clears throat> you were talking is i feel like closer to our galactic brothers and sisters of course are coming to me yes well you are you're in touch with galactic beings so um many of you are in touch with galactic beings i am a spirit i am a creator being so i am not exactly what you would consider an alien but there are aliens around you in corporeal bodies in fourth dimension fifth dimension third dimension and so you have some with them. their energy in a way that is uh the way it's supposed to be you have been around them long enough to gain a friendly indication from them and are reaching back to them and letting them know that you are of their their uh company i'm also starting to see them in a way but not completely in a, what way are you seeing them it's like a shadow many people oh. have fourth dimensional energy open i I know of many that can see aliens, but not fully. Mm -hmm. They cannot see them in the third dimension because they are not there. They are in fourth dimension or holograph or whatever, astral, and some with great amounts of fourth dimensional energy or with the certain areas of the brain open to fourth dimensional energy can actually start to see um, beings around them. So it is, it is going to be more common as time moves forward that perhaps more of you, there are others in this room that see aliens, not fully and, and not like they're standing next to you in a corporeal body, but you actually see their outlines, silhouettes, energy signatures. Sometimes you just see their eyes. Sometimes you just see their energy. Sometimes you see their silhouette. It is true. This is going to happen more often, and it will be a proof to many that the aliens are there. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, uh, we have a question from Christine. Go ahead, Christine. Hello. How are you? Christine, how are you? Whoa, my cat just took off. Um, I wanted to ask you um, due to the vortexes and the different energy and everything around um earth in um i was wondering if there's a vortex or a weird energy going on around um the boston river where um they've been finding um young men disappearing and then all of a sudden reappearing dead maybe uh, a month later or something like that there is, is there someone some that's doing that that is that is actually as a serial killer um, oh, okay. It is not anything to do with anything uh, astral or from outer space. Okay. Um, so, so sending well, energy. That is a very sad situation. I am yeah. aware of it. Okay. So sending so, energy there to clean it up would that help? Or yes, prayer capture? is helpful in every way. It might okay. curtail the killer from picking up uh someone who might have some spiritual uh insights and know that this is not a safe person okay okay yes all prayer and all um positive energy is helpful if it is their time though they will be gone is it wrong for me also to um, pray that this person's caught, or should I just let it, you know, since no, everybody's that got... that is fine. 
It is oh, fine okay. that you pray for justice. Justice is okay. a good thing to pray for because many people say, oh, it sounds, it doesn't sound right. It doesn't sound loving or whatever to pray for that. But remember this, when you love the world, you want justice for all people. You want justice, love, and uh, fairness for all people. Isn't that part of unconditional love? And yes. so that does not mean you are wishing bad things on these people, but you are wishing them to turn to the light. You're wishing them to turn around and see the good parts of the world. Now, that is not wrong to pray for justice and for pray that those that are negative and are not lost or, or whatever the word is you want to use in a positive way. That is not a bad thing to do. It is what is intended for humanity to do for their own world. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, our good friend Brian Sims is in the, uh, in the chat. He would like to know if there is any timeline about actual first contact. That's what he would like to know. Oh my, that word is thrown around so much. And it can be, it, it actually means so many things to so many people at this time. First contact, um, in its truth, he said real be, open I, contact, just to be, just to be, and how close is humanity for real open contact, just to be clear? Um, well, let me put it this way. Parts of humanity are ready. Parts of humanity are open. And parts of humanity say, I want it now. There's other parts that are saying it doesn't exist. There's other parts that saying we don't want it. There's other parts that say it's their negative beings. There are many, many thought processes going on about aliens in general. Now, those thought processes have got to change to some degree before aliens can actually come to your planet, or I should say visitors. Because are they really so alien? They've been here many, many thousands of times many, many millions of times, actually, if you want to count going back thousands and thousands of years. So they are wanting to revisit your world when you are ready for them to revisit. Now, like I said, many of you are ready, but many of you are not. Many places are not ready. And when they get a little bit closer, it will be time. And I don't see that as being that far away, except, um, let me tell you this. Many situations are piling up one on top of another. Many events, I should say. And these events will open the eyes of your people. And as you have the people open their eyes, they will understand that there is greater spirituality out there, that there's things beyond their imagination, that their third dimensional existence is only a small part of the universe. When this happens, first contact will be near. Here. We missed that oh, last bit quiet. because you're freezing just a little bit. We've been freezing off and on. So we missed that you said first contact will be and then it froze. So maybe that was maybe meant we to be. Seen but. It. Um, we have not seen the freezing, but um, what did I say? I just said that the events that are going to happen in the future to wake up the people of the earth, it will open their eyes, many of them, to the existence of spirituality, to the existence that they are not alone in the galaxy, that there's things beyond third dimension, and that they are very much a very small part of the universe. And this will wake up your people. And at that time, contact will be near. Did I freeze that time? You did not. Thank you so very much. There's a question from Navir in the chat. Navir. 
Uh, hi, oh, Anika. It's uh, Nivi. How are you? Greetings. How are you? Uh, I'm doing really well. Um, actually, I'm, uh, I have a question for you. Uh, I work on my uh, positive momentum, being in a mode of allowance, removing resistance, and uh, increasing, attracting uh, my desires. Uh, can you suggest any practices I can use to increase my manifestation speed and quality? You are doing a good job at this time, but you must remember that third dimension gets in the way of, of bringing all these things to yourself. And also, uh, the, your mission is on a timely basis. And sometimes uh, patience is learned before some of the gifts are given. So do not be too discouraged because you are on the right track and you are doing the right things. Now, I want you to understand that you are a light being, and you know that already, but picture yourself in a light being situation. When you, when you are looking at yourself, you are the perfect light being. When you do your meditations or prayers, whatever it is that you do to contact the outer world, Picture yourself as a light being so that you may be able to contact other light beings in a different way than you have been doing so. I would like to see that you unify with them in a, a little bit of a conference, in a light being conference where they will give you some more energies, they will give you some more ideas and enlightenment. Now, as far as getting all the things that you need, they also are aware of what you need, want, and desire, and will that will come at the appropriate times when you are ready for them. At this moment, you're still uh, growing in thought processes. You're still uh, creating uh, a sense of a greater mission, and they are helping you do so. So I should work uh, to sense? contact um, beings um, that are close to me, beings that are connected to my mission? You will be, just picture yourself as a light being and they will be with you. Because as you look at yourself as a light being and fill yourself with light, other light beings will be attracted to that. And you will feel their presence. Others of you can do the same thing. You can see yourself beings that you are and attract those to you that are around you. Now, I am sometimes attracted to those situations because I see what is necessary and I can help. If I cannot help the situation, which usually I can, but not always, I will be there definitely. Thank you very much, Elika. Much love. You're welcome. Um, Christine had a quick question for you. Yes. Yes, I was wondering, um, instead of calling um, ETs extraterrestrials or something else, is there another name that's a lot more friendly or understanding? Well, visitors is good, or neighbors, but <laughs> because that's what they really are. But they do not mind these other words. The reason why they do not mind the words aliens or, well, they do sort of get upset about extraterrestrials, the word extraterrestrials, because they're not part of your, uh, your world and they're not extra from your world. Okay. So they sort of say, we're not extraterrestrials. We are aliens mm -hmm. or we are visitors or... Okay but they don't really get upset about anything that you call them because they realize that you don't know really who they are yet. So they would prefer to be called by name if you knew them, but if you don't, visitor, friend, neighbor. Okay. Okay. That's good. Thank you. That's very You're good welcome. Yep. What? I said that's very good information. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, and one more question. Uh, Lily Plaid Paula had a question. She said, I was told that I had a Pleiadian in my makeup. Can you tell me what kind of Pleiadian?
It's a plie. You have a, a blue plie. Actually, you have more than one. So I can tell you that there is a little bit of blue Pleiadian there, and there's a little bit of Nord there, and also uh, the short, uh, the short blue Pleiadians have a, a touch in there too. So there's a lot of Pleiadian mix in you. You seem to have uh, gravitated toward a mix of Pleiadian uh, positivities. Thank you for that. I You're welcome. Are there any more questions in your room? Because we don't seem to have any more in our room. All right, very oh, well. Oh, Peter does have a question. I'm sorry. Oh, wait oh. a minute. Uh, <laughs> so hi, Alika. This is Peter. Much love. Um, I have hi, Peter. Question. I have a quick question. Uh, what kind of entities are around me? Entities. Well, they come and they go. But right now around you there is a Syrian which is a very light kind of energy. Do you feel that? Um, it's a very light energy. It's a very soft energy. It's actually a female named Suntia. Suntia. Okay, thank you. Um, there's also a, a Pleiadian, but he is not as close. He's far, he's over in the corner and uh, he doesn't want to be recognized, but he is a green, Pleiadian from um, the uh, Pleiadian systems, of course, and um, his name is Gerian Zaves. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. That's my good question. Yes, a question here. Perfect. There is an insectoid that I'm connected with, with a praying mantis. And I feel that we've been communicating back and forth in his language. Yes. Uh, can I uh, find out his name? Um, one moment, see if I can connect with him. Is he around your home? I think or I is he around you uh, other places? Yes. Does he follow you? Yes. He does follow you when you walk. He's not the only one, yes. Yes, I know that you have more than one connection. One moment, please, and I will check with that. I do not usually talk many to many Pleiadians. I mean, not insectoids, I mean, because they are not in my uh, realm of understanding as far as I understand them. It's not that. But they are not in usually my understanding as far as their makeup as a species, how they act. Oh, like, I, I do not appreciate some of them. But this one is more friendly. All right, let's see. I do love all insects, though, and insectoids. His name is, one moment, Baikara. Baikara. You're welcome. So there, yes, but not that... I don't appreciate insectoids, but they do very little to uh, further the good of the universe at times. And sometimes that's, that makes me a little upset with them, but I still love them and I think that they're wonderful. They're getting better. They're getting better all the time. Perfect, thank you so much. Marlene has a question. Marlene. Adonai. Hello. Hello. Um, my question is concerning the Kumara, uh, the Kumara people. Um, where are they from, and what is their work or their mission, as an over as an overall? Please. I did not hear the question. You froze. Um, the question is concerning the Kumara people, the Kumara yes. beings. Uh, where are them. they? Yes, and where, where are they from, and what uh, is their work or their mission pertaining? They have to several life? places. They have several places around the universe where they where they live at this time, but they also have some underground uh, subterranean areas in the Earth that they are. But they're not a huge population on the Earth. But they are from. Uh, uh, originally from Cygnus, 
and they are their mission is just one of peace and love and they do spread that around the galaxies they are very a very ancient species and they are a very loving species and they're very high in their dimension they're a high fifth dimensional species almost six dimensional so they are they're very very wonderful oh, is there something specific you wanted to ask about them um are they um have they adopted venus as their planet for the oh, they are, time being they are on venus and mother venus uh, lady venus i should call her that's what she prefers lady venus is very much uh fond of them and they are interactive with venus quite a bit they have not i don't know if adopted is the right word but they do spend so, uh, quite a bit of time working with the venusians yes thank you i read that um archangels and uh perhaps sanat kumara and sananda kumara those are all kumaras master kumaras is that correct yes yes thank you thank you so uh, basically that's what i wanted to know thank you so much There was a question, I and I just don't know if, it, if if you just answered it or not, but um, there's a person in the chat that Blue O wants to know is, who is Sanat Kumara? Is that, I'm sure, is Marlene, is that, would, you just mentioned that same word. Yes, she just mentioned yes. Sanat Kumara, and he's a very high, high being. Many th uh, revere him as a godlike individual. Okay. He is under God, and he has... as many of the qual he is still an alien species but he is a wonderful and most loving and incredible being okay thank you so very much i don't see any more questions yeah. on our side uh, i don't know all if right excellent in the room. perhaps it's time for someone else to grace your presence well we were very pleased to have you here thank you so very much for your time oh you are welcome so welcome Mm -hmm. And it was great to be here. I enjoy talking to the people of Earth. They are special to me. Especially at this time when you're so inquisitive and so beautiful. So your fourth dimensional energy is amazing. So it, it will become even more amazing in the future. But I'm, I'm really, really excited for you. Thank you again. Namaste. Bless much continue, to, continue to move forward. Ah, namaste, yes. Goodbye for now.